Wild canids are found all over the world, from the agile jackals of Africa to the resourceful coyotes of North America. Among them, the largest species is the gray wolf, native to both North America and Eurasia. While there are other species of wolves, the largest is the gray wolf. Given their wide range, gray wolves have several subspecies, but which one grows the largest? And just how big can they get? Now, I have to admit, when you start looking for accounts for large wolves, you might end up finding accounts of huge giants in remote regions of the taiga, or rumors of trappers in Alaska seeing wolves the size of ponies, like the alleged saber wolf said to inhabit the Northwestern Territories. I have even read accounts of dire wolves in parts of Europe, though despite their similarities, genetic studies have shown that dire wolves diverged from the lineage of true wolves more than 5 million years ago, and also they're extinct as far as we know. These mysterious wolves are certainly intriguing, and maybe you like those ideas and subscribe to some of those theories, but sometimes you have to walk before you can run, and perhaps that is a topic for another video. For now, let's look at the known, recognized wolves. Again, the grey wolf sounds like a single animal, but there are a variety of subspecies across the globe. One of the most common wolves in the United States is the Great Plains wolf, sometimes referred to as the buffalo wolf. Though once abundant across the Great Plains, it was thought the last wolf was shot in 1922, and it was declared extinct in 1926, but they made a comeback, kind of. Thankfully, some were still alive in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Upper Michigan. Though their numbers were low, protections in the 1970s helped them recover, to an extent. They may be common, but how large do they get? Well, it seems the largest on record comes from a biological survey in North Dakota all the way back in 1926. Considering that was their extinction date, it must have been referring to a wolf caught a few years prior. That wolf was said to be 150 pounds or 68 kilos. Even then, they referred to it as an exceptionally large male. Nowadays, big males are closer to about 100 pounds or 45 kilos. I think with a smaller population, there is less chance for a genetic outlier to pop up. But right now, these aren't the largest subspecies, so let's go bigger. But wait, this is where it gets tricky. If you look at some lists online, usually the next largest wolf is considered to be the interior Alaskan wolf, found in areas around British Columbia and Alaska. Now, according to the Yukon website, the average weight for these wolves, or at least for males, males are generally bigger, are between 30 to 50 kilos, 66 to 110 pounds. Some put the upper limit closer to 60 kilos, 132 pounds. So a little bigger than the Great Plains wolf, but still not massive, right? Still not the biggest wolf. Except there are claims of individuals being 81.4 kilos or 179 pounds, which right there would make it the largest wolf on record. Or it would, except that there is another interior Alaskan wolf said to be 96 kilos or 211 pounds. That might not seem all that big, but it's actually considerably heavier than the other largest wolf subspecies that are supposed to be bigger. But there are some caveats. Honestly, I don't think it's necessarily impossible that there was an interior Alaskan wolf that large. Though sometimes the source listed for this size claim was the 1970s book of Wolves and Men by Barry Lopez. However, he doesn't actually say that in the book. He does say, and this has to be stated in every how big video I suppose, but he does say, quote, Whenever I've spoken with people who've never seen a wolf, I've found that the belief that wolves are enormous is pervasive. Even people who have considerable experience with the animal seem to want it to be bigger than it is. 
A trapper in Minnesota, a man who had caught hundreds of wolves in his life, looked at one in a trap one day and judged its weight at 85 or 90 pounds. When it was weighed, it was found to be 67 pounds, which is nothing new with animals, I suppose. I thought at first that these subspecies would track a bit with Bergman's rule or Bergman's law, which those watching probably already know what that is. But in case you haven't, to put it in simplistic terms, it's basically the idea that organisms at higher latitudes should be larger than ones near the equator to conserve heat better. On the North American continent, that seems to track, though in Europe and Asia, it's a little different. The tundra wolf seems to approach a max weight of about 52 kilos, 115 pounds, and they live pretty far north. And yet the Eurasian wolf, or at least some populations of them, seem to get a lot larger. The book titled Wolves, by Nancy Gibson states the heaviest Eurasian wolf was shot in Romania and weighed 158 pounds or 71 kilos. However, according to the book Mammals of the Soviet Union, some exceptionally large wolves got close to 80 kilos, 176 pounds. Claims of 90 kilos or about 200 pound wolves from Ukraine also exist, but unfortunately not verified. But let's go back to Alaska slash Western Canada, as most sources I've seen say that the actual largest subspecies of wolf is the Mackenzie wolf or the Northwestern wolf, and that it is arguably the largest subspecies of gray wolf. Not just on a variety of websites, but also some notable scientists in the field seem to agree. David L. Meech is an American biologist who specializes in wolf research. He's written over 300 scientific papers and published over 11 books, mostly on wolves. He is also famous for debunking the older understanding of the idea of the alpha wolf. And you can read more about his research on that. But in his book titled The Wolf, when referring to the Mackenzie Valley Wolf, also known as the Northwestern Wolf, he writes that this subspecies represents some of the largest wolves in North America. Similarly, in the book Canids of the Worlds, Princeton Field Guide, it states that the Northwestern Wolf, that it is, quote, the largest canid and the largest subspecies of wolf with a more robust build than the European subspecies with a rounder, larger head, etc. It lists the weight of males between 45 to 66 kilos or 145 pounds. However, in the beginning of the book, it states that, quote, the gray wolf can weigh up to 80 kilos, 176 pounds. But why doesn't it list 80 kilos for the Northwestern wolf if it's the largest subspecies? And why, in the same book, under the section on the Eurasian wolf, does it state that the weight is between 32 to 80 kilos? Again, 176 pounds. But this is for a subspecies that is smaller, or is supposed to be smaller. I think what's happening here is that for the Northwestern wolf, the average weight of males is higher than the average weight for, let's say, the Eurasian wolves. But some exceptional wolves have been recorded in Eurasia that far exceed the average. Similar with the interior Alaskan wolf, which may be a separate subspecies to the northwestern wolf. It seems to be listed that way, but their range overlap a lot. But anyway, it would seem that while averages vary between subspecies of gray wolf, Grey wolves in both Eurasia and Alaska slash Canada can, in rare cases, reach a similar exceptional size. Which is how big? The 80 kilo, 175 to 77 pounds, seems to be acknowledged as the largest. According to Alaska Fish and Wildlife, the largest wolf on record was caught by Frank Glasser in the summer of 1939, a 175 pound male, which is basically 80 kilos. Now that wolf did have a stomach full of meat, but what about the Eurasian wolf that was 80 kilos from the Soviet Union? I would imagine it's a similar story that it had also just eaten. But to be honest, I don't know that. And perhaps that really was how much it weighed on an empty stomach. And maybe that is really what is attainable for exceptionally large wolves. And perhaps there are some bigger ones that have never been caught. 90 kilos or more, which is closer to 200 pounds, 
seems to be pushing it. In the book Wolves of Alaska by Jim Reardon, he spoke about a trapper that told him about another trapper who said they had caught and weighed a wolf at 212 pounds, which is 96 kilos. Pretty huge. But there is a little game of telephone here, with a trapper telling another trapper and then telling the author. And we don't know, if this number is accurate, if the wolf had a stomach full of meat. Although, even if it did, if the number is accurate, then this would have been one of the largest wolves ever recorded. Truly gigantic. That's if it's true. And maybe it is. Of course, again, I could be wrong. All I'm saying is that if I'm a little bit skeptical about 80 kilos, I'm a lot more skeptical about 90 kilos. Of course, weight is the most important factor in determining size, but I'm sure many of us also like to know how tall they stand and how long they get. Some of the tallest numbers do seem to come from the Northwestern Wolves, with shoulder heights listed at 91 centimeters, so pretty close to 3 feet tall, as listed in the field guide, but also in The Life of Mammals by David Attenborough, it states they can be around 3 feet tall at the shoulder. And for length, if we include the tail, the Northwestern Wolf also takes the prize, with a length of about 2.2 meters, or 7.2 feet. So how big can a wolf get? Well, according to our current understanding, and being a little bit generous, it seems they can stand over 90 centimeters at the shoulder, 3 feet, about 7.2 feet long, 2.2 meters, and weigh around 175 pounds, around 80 kilos. At least, these are some of the biggest numbers that we have. By the way, I have seen the video of the huge black wolf with the dog, but while this does seem to be a really big wolf, we don't know how big the dog is, and therefore we also don't know how big the wolf is. So I'd be cautious about claims that this is a super giant wolf or a dire wolf, as some people have suggested. There are many other topics related to wolves I want to talk about, from their alleged super packs to some of their behavior and also the unfortunate man-eating events. So if any of those sound interesting, let me know. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you would consider liking and subscribing, as we are approaching a pretty big number. Anyway, thank you very much to my patrons and members, and thank you so much for watching.